Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tronage, and today we're going to be talking about a new take on an old classic of a frame. The ZMR 250. Stick around. recognize the name ZMR250. Um, I'm not sure if it's like a copycat of a frame or whatnot, but it's a frame that I remember when I first started looking at frames to do my own build. It was one of the ones that I was kind of toying with and seemed very popular at the time. It looked like this. And it's, you know, it was like kind of like almost like a staple one that I just felt like a lot of people were talking about and using and whatnot. But, you know, new things kind of came out, new things came into style and stuff, and you really didn't see many people using it anymore. Particularly, the thing that I thought kind of went out of style quick was that little plate on the top that's held in with the little squishy things to, I guess, reduce jello of putting a, you know, GoPro or something on the top of it. It added weight. It wasn't really necessary for what we were doing. That would be good if you were just kind of hovering and flying around, kind of like a DJI kind of pilot. But if you're going to be doing like a freestyle or a race or that kind of stuff, it sort of was just extra weight you didn't really need. Um, fast forward to today, I was actually shopping around, and I couldn't believe that they actually came out with a new version of this same frame. And it's been, you know, kind of redesigned. They reduced the weight on it. They took that plate off the top. So here's what it looked like and we're gonna check it out. And the best part about it was the price. Look at this, $13.59? I mean, how do you not throw that in your cart while you're shopping? I couldn't, I, I mean, I, I've never seen a, you know, 250 millimeter or five inch style frame for, for that cheap. It just seemed ridiculous almost. So I figured, let me pick it up, let me check it out, let me try it out, let me, you know, unbox it for you. We'll build it up, we'll kind of mock it up a little bit, see see what see what we think about it, you know? And if uh, if it passes my, my inspection, I might be using this in a, uh, a budget build video that I'm gonna be putting together and kind of feeling out all the different components that I wanna put into that build and, and then we'll do the build together, you know? So here's what we'll do. You guys come on in, we'll unbag it, I guess. But we'll unbag it, we'll look through the parts, we'll do some measurements, see how thick the carbon fiber is and stuff, and then we'll kind of mock it all up and make it, you know, see what it looks like. All right, so come on in. So here it is. So why don't we just dump it out and start taking some measurements and take some weights on this stuff, and then we'll, uh, we'll put this together and see what we think. All right. Okay. So first impressions on the carbon fiber itself. The first impressions I have on the carbon fiber is that it's not, it doesn't have a little camfered, chamfered, whatever they call that when the edge is beveled. It doesn't have that, it's just a straight cut. But the edges are clean. I'm not getting any like carbon fiber dust on my fingers when I rub across them, so that's good. I would say the cut quality is actually really nice on this. It's, um, very strong. I don't know how thick this is, but I certainly can't get it to bend. Um, so let's see what we got here. We got some screws. We got some standoffs for the middle. That's always a nice treat. We got four arms. We have a top plate, bottom plate. Uh, I guess this is the bottom plate. This is the sandwich plate part. This is the top plate. We have some standoffs to go on it. We have some foam uh, feet and then I'm gonna guess this is gonna be the camera mounting the universal camera lens adjustable holder in red so This is basically you bolt this part down onto your quad and then it has three different rings Depending on what size your lens is that grabs the lens and that's how you mount it with the little screws So you're not actually even using the holes on the side. It's actually holding it by the lens I don't know that I'm going to use it that way. Maybe I'll make some sort of 3D printed solution, but we'll see. 
All right, so that I can put to the side. All right, so let's get some measurements first. So I'm sure you're gonna wanna know how thick the legs are. So our legs are at three millimeter thick. <clears throat> the bottom plate is at about one and a half millimeter thick. The sandwich plate, about one and a half millimeters thick. And the top plate, about one and a half millimeters thick. So it's not exactly the thickest carbon fiber, but it certainly has a good cut to it. I've seen way worse. And it's actually even the thinner stuff is not as flexible as I would have thought. So here's what drew me to this frame primarily, aside from the fact that it was a little reminiscent of the original frames that I was looking at, but I thought that this would be a really good frame also for someone just starting out because if you're gonna, when you first start out, chances are you're probably gonna break one of the legs. That's gonna be where a problem perhaps may lay. And what's great about the design of this frame and the style of this frame is that each leg is individually bolted on with four screws. Now, yes, it's a little redundant because frames, you can you know hold them on with like maybe just two screws, so you're, you're adding a little bit of weight there. But the beauty of this is it's very easy to pop those four screws out, slide a leg out, get your new leg, slide it in, and put your four screws back in. And it, you're up and running again. You don't have to take everything apart because that happened to me in the very beginning. That's not a good thing. And then it also has just kind of like that typical, you know, boxy H style with some standoffs and stuff. So I thought it'd be really uh, a really nice frame. So, oh, and that's pretty nifty too, I just realized. The bottom plate actually has bigger holes so that you can have it installed, but you can still install the other screws through it so that they don't interfere. That's pretty cool. Go over what we got here. It has the 30 by 30 hole pattern for your normal full size stack. If you wanted to and you wanted to get a little crazy, you could put your little 20 by 20 stack into these holes. You could get all crazy and rambunctious like that. Uh, the rest of these holes, these four are gonna be used for the arms. These are gonna be used for the standoffs and that's about it. The only holes I'm not really sure of, and if you know if you know what these holes are for, you know, leave a comment below and let me know. These two holes here on the arm, I'm not sure what would go there because your motor would be living here. Your ESC would probably be living somewhere about here. So I'm not sure what these two little holes would be for. Or if you put your EF4 on one ESC, then you'd have motor wires running down. So I think maybe this is like motor wires come around, you put a little zip tie here, and then they can go like change direction and go on to the other side of the arm. I don't know. I don't know what those little holes are for. So if you know what these holes are for, comment below. Let me know what these holes are for. All right, so let's put the flight controller hardware aside. Let's put the foam feet aside. And let's put the standoffs aside for now. And let's take the top plate and put that aside. Let's just put our arms onto our craft. So let's open our little packet of hardware and see what we got.
lot of screws, man. Wow. But, I mean, that feels solid. Like, they don't, they don't move or nothing. So it's actually set up, you put your stack in the middle, and then you, what's pretty cool I'm noticing is it has these slots here. And those you can actually run a zip tie through so you can bundle something down here. This could be like a video transmitter or a receiver or whatever. And you have four locations where you could zip tie something down next to your stack along the path towards the front. And then these two slots are gonna be how you would, I guess, mount your camera if you're using the one that came with it that's gonna screw down into the bottom plate. So far, I'm pretty happy with this, actually. Kind of digging it. All right, let's put the top, let's put the uh, standoffs on, see what it looks like in all of its full glory. And there we go. This is built out. And I have to say, I'm actually really enjoying the way that this frame looks. I'm enjoying the way that this built. And I don't know, I feel like this would be a nice, you know, it's kind of like, a, you can see it's clearly like an H style frame. You know, it's kind of the elongated this way versus this way. Great for freestyle. Still use it in race. Overall, I'm pretty happy. So let's get a weight on this and let's see what this weighs. So you guys can compare it to your other frames that you may have. Let's see here, we're zero, are we in grams? We're in grams, all right, here we go. Frame, 120 grams. That's it, that's not too bad. And what's nice is now, like I was saying earlier, you can take this craft, right? And let's say you crash it and you got your whole stack is built out in here and you break this arm. It's a simple matter of you just take your Allen key. You come in here with your Allen key to grab that, that nut like that. And then you just loosen you do that to all four, slide your leg out, slide one new one in, you're good to go. And then all you'd have to do is just, you know, take off your motor obviously too, because you're gonna have your motor, you're gonna have your ESC, or if you do a form one ESC, they'll be in here, but you gotta take the motor off too. But you take your motor off, you disconnect these four screws, slide this out, get a new leg, put it back in, put the screws in, you're done. Battery strap, I mean, if you wanted to run them on underneath straight away, you could, but if you wanted to kind of capture them, it does even have little slots for your battery strap. It looks like it has, uh, let's see here, this is the front. It has uh, maybe slots to wrap around to put like some sort of mount on it if you wanted to. In the back, I mean, if you wanted to, you could. It, it's got the hole for your um, SMA connector, although I probably wouldn't use that because I, I'm, um, I don't know about putting that on the carbon fiber. I like it to be on something gushy that can give when the craft moves. So I'll probably rig up something out the back for my antennas and all that stuff. But, very cool. All right guys, I am very impressed for $13.50 or whatever, how much this frame was. I mean, obviously, yes, it's not the thickest carbon fiber in the world. It's only like three millimeter on the arms and it's only like one and a half on the top and bottom plates. So it's, it's, it's thinner. I ain't gonna sugarcoat that. I mean, usually with a little bit more expensive build, the legs are probably around four millimeters thick, and usually your top bottom plate maybe be about like two or three millimeters thick on them. So it is a little bit thinner on the carbon fiber side, but I mean, it is a $13.50 frame. Um, 
you know, if you break the entire thing, crush it, and you buy another one, you've now spent $26, which is what one frame of, you know, like a Martian 2 would be is like around $26 or so. You could pretty much buy two of these if you wanted and have one as a spare for just all parts. And then after that many crashes, I think you'd still come out ahead. You know, this is not high-end stuff. This is not an Armiton. This is not, you know, high-end stuff here we're talking. This is $13. So you kind of get what you pay for. I mean, I'm not going to say that this is, oh my God, this is equal to those. But for the price, I'm very impressed. Uh, but the real proof is going to be in the pudding, how it feels to fly, how it feels to build it out. But I, I mean, for a, a beginner frame, I think this is excellent. You have a lot of room to work with inside. You have nice arms to put your ESCs on if you want to put them out on your arms. You have plenty of room. That's the other thing. The cool thing about this design is it doesn't put the arms into the inside and then put that top plate on the inside, you know, the sandwich plate. And because it's more of an H style frame, instead of like a true X, these legs aren't involving with your stack. So when you build this out, you have the full height here. In fact, let's see how, how much height that is. You have 35 millimeters of stack height that you can use the in, in, in its entirety. Now I know like the, the current things have that whole low rider thing and only having as few layers as possible. But remember, this is, this is more geared towards someone just getting into the hobby. When you're just getting in the hobby, you need a little bit more room to work with. It makes it a lot easier to put your equipment in here. It makes it a lot easier to build it out. It lets you even put fancy things. Like if you wanted to put like a run cam split uh, in here, you have the room to add those extra layers. So you, you could do easily, I could see easily, you could do a 4-in-1 ESC, a flight controller, a run cam split, and even a uh, stack mounted VTX all in one deal like you probably use even some of those uh the white noise fpvs those mounting boards you put your receiver and your vtx in the stack and i think that would all fit in there i think that is incredible so this gets a recommend from uh from me um obviously you get what you pay for and i understand it's not high-end stuff and i understand it's not you know the latest in style but for $13.50, come on, guys. I mean, at worst case, if you want to throw together like a beater quad for 13 bucks, if you destroy it, who cares? You can buy another one for 13 bucks, and you're still ahead. It's in my opinion. All right, so as always, my name is Tronage. Fly strong.